investigation and a trial delay. Plus football frenzy, why the takeover of a local bank means a last minute major college money scramble less than three weeks before football season. And a young boy found with illegal drugs, the incredible story of who gave them to him and why the boy isn't the one charged with the crime. Live from Alabama's News Center in high definition, this is NBC 13 News at 5, where accuracy matters. Good evening, I'm Gina Redmond. And I'm Mike Royer. Thanks for joining us tonight. Our top story at 5, Larry Langford wants to move his fraud trial to Tuscaloosa. The important facts tonight. This afternoon, Langford asked a judge for a change of venue in his case. He cited negative media coverage in the request. He's also seeking another trial delay. NBC 13 HD's John Papke has been covering Langford's case. He joins us live here in the studio. John, what do prosecutors have to say about the request both for the venue change and the delay in the trial? Well, they didn't say anything so far about the uh, request for the delay, Mike, but while they do dispute some of Langford's arguments about the trial's publicity, prosecutors do not oppose moving the trial to Tuscaloosa. And since Judge Scott Kugler already has an office and court in Tuscaloosa, a move to that venue would not be out of the ordinary. Now, Langford now faces a jury as the lone defendant in the case. Yesterday, co-defendant Bill Blunt did plead guilty, and last month, the other co-defendant, Al LaPierre, did the same. In fact, Langford's attorney is citing the guilty pleas as a reason he wants the trial delayed. He claims now that he'll have to prepare for the trial by himself. He will not be ready in time. Not only that, but he'll have to prepare against uh, testimony from the two members of the alleged bribery conspiracy. Langford is accused of taking bribes in exchange for arranging bond swap contracts for Blunt and LaPierre. Criminal defense lawyer Richard Jaffe says Langford's attorney can try to attack the credibility of Blunt and LaPierre, but that does not always work. It can be effective, but again, jurors do look behind that, and they always ask themselves, why would a person plead guilty if they weren't? And in this case, it is a conspiracy case, so there are going to be some challenges. Meanwhile, you may remember a judge has appointed Rasmussen, Michael Rasmussen, to represent Langford after Langford argued that he could not afford him. Jaffe said the normal rate for a federally appointed criminal defense lawyer is $110 an hour, likely only a third or fourth of what an experienced lawyer charges. Mike? All right, John, thanks. Now, Mayor Langford has pleaded not guilty to all 60 charges that he faces. If convicted, the maximum sentence Langford would receive could total 804 years. Well, we've had a few heavy downpours in our area today. Are we in store for more tonight? Let's check in with our chief meteorologist, Jerry Tracy. Jerry? And Gina, there are still some showers in the case. His attorney says there's been too much publicity around the case here in the city of Birmingham. He also is asking for the trial to be delayed. NBC 13 HD's John Papke has been following the case, and John, the attorneys aren't asking for the case to be heard too far away from here. Is that right? Well, you're right, Mike. In his motion, Langford's attorney argued they'd hope to try the case here in Birmingham, but, quote, the latest publicity is the straw that broke the back of that hope, end quote. And his lawyer claims that while those news reports may have reached jurors in the Tuscaloosa area, the attention there to them is less. Either way, the trial is only 12 days away now, and Langford's defense must go on. Larry Langford is now heading to trial alone. His former co-defendants, Bill Blunt and Al LaPierre, have pleaded guilty and are expected to testify against him. For some perspective on Langford's defense, we spoke with criminal lawyer Richard Jaffe. He thinks that in light of the two guilty pleas, Langford's attorney faces a tougher task. Why would people plead guilty uh, unless they were guilty? So you've got some real uh, challenges if you're defending the last person standing. Being the mayor of Alabama's largest city, Langford is constantly in the public spotlight. Whether it was driving a bulldozer at the dome groundbreaking or offering court fee refunds to the civil rights foot soldiers, a day rarely passes without Langford in the news. Jaffe believes the mayor's exposure could be a factor. Obviously, it's the hope of any defendant facing trial that any favorable publicity will carry itself on into the jury room and throughout the trial, even though jurors are told that they can consider nothing else but the evidence. One of the biggest questions heading into Langford's trial is will he take the stand? Jaffe says he rarely recommends his clients testifying because it is too risky. Most of the time, it's my preference not to. Not because of innocence or guilt, but because cross-examination can often make a person look guilty when in fact they may not be. Jaffe says the decision to put a defendant on the stand isn't usually made until the last minute. 
Now, Mayor Langford is also seeking a trial delay, like we mentioned. The mayor's attorney says now that Langford is the sole defendant, he's preparing for trial by himself and won't be ready in time. He also cited recent surgeries on Langford's throat, vocal cords, and teeth. Langford wants more time to rest his vo voice and throat. The judge in the case, Scott Kugler, denied another delay request just three weeks ago. Mike? All right, thanks very much, John. New at 6, a prostitution sting in Birmingham, and all 36 people were arrested, 23 of those for soliciting for prostitution. Police aren't saying...